I wanted to talk a little bit about excuses. So somebody was saying the other day, their husband, they had caught him cheating twice. And it wasn't just cheating, which is bad enough in and of itself, but it was having two big, you know, like long lasting affairs. So this wasn't just, a, this wasn't, again, not that that would make it any better, but it wasn't like a fling. It was kind of this ongoing re- relationship that he had had. And he also has a pattern of, you know, he's, he's an alcoholic. He's, you know, mismanaging funds. Like here, this gal is, she's continually, you know, she's losing sleep over trying to budget and trying to make sure that they've got, um, you know, money and enough money in savings. And he just doesn't care. So he'll go out and rack up credit card debt and then he'll apologize for it and he'll take out, you know, he'll spend money on what he wants. He'll do, this is, oh my gosh, I've experienced this and this is so crazy making, where he'll give her gifts that he wants. So it's like, hey, I got you, we're going to go to this baseball game for your birthday. And she doesn't even like baseball. So it's, he wants to go to the baseball game. So he's buying her tickets for his birthday or buying himself tickets really for her birthday, stuff like that. So, so this last time, so she caught him cheating and, um, he had given the excuse that things had really been bad in their relationship for a long time. Of course, he's, this is the first she's heard of it, right? She had no idea that things were bad. And of course he's blaming her. Um, he didn't know how he could talk to her about these things. And so, Uh, He was afraid that if you brought up any issues that she would leave. And so, which is ridiculous, right? So like we can all see that this is a manipulation because we're not emotionally invested in it. So, and then, and it just, it goes, it's just on and on and on like ridiculous behavior, right? So um, it got me thinking. So now here's what really upsets me about this. So what, really gets me is so now she's believing this excuse that he's just not comfortable communicating with her. So now they're in therapy and they're like, quote unquote, working through these issues, but because now he's been able to shift his bad behavior into a couple's issue. So now his cheating really isn't the focus. Now the focus is on their communication and how, um, he's made himself into like this scared little boy of like, Oh, I just, I was so unhappy. I just couldn't talk to you about it because I was afraid you would leave. And of course her reaction is why would I leave you? Because we've already been through so much together, but really, of course, it's not that they've been through so much together. It's that he's put her through so much. There's a big difference there. So now they're all playing this little, this, He's got the therapist wrapped around his finger. He's got her wrapped around his finger. Now she's turning herself inside out, trying to be a better wife, trying to be more understanding. They just went away for this romantic weekend. And here I am thinking to myself, you have got to be freaking kidding me. So he was able to not only get out of any consequences for his reaction or his, his reaction for his uh, behavior, but he was able to, to blame her. And in turn, now she's walking on eggshells. Now she's on her best behavior, trying to save her marriage because somehow her actions caused him to cheat. Wild stuff. That's that kind of stuff just makes me really angry. And it, it makes me angry that she's now stuck in this crazy making twilight zone where he's manipulated the therapist. And now like, how long is that? How long is that going to go on? It's probably going to go on until she catches him doing something else, at which point it's going to be yet another excuse. So this brings me back to the original point here of excuses. There's always, somebody always can have an excuse for anything that they do, right? Like if I were to take a cup of coffee and throw it at a person and they'd be like, oh my gosh, why did you do that? I could say, oh, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I was just really angry. I was having a bad day. Okay. That doesn't make what you did. Okay. Right. There's still like, that's not okay. Or if I were to say, well, the cup was just too hot. I couldn't hold it anymore. Okay. 
but it doesn't make it okay that you threw a cup of hot coffee at me, right? It's the, it's the same thing with cheating. Like a person can can use any number of excuses for their behavior. They can say, "Oh, well, you were working too much or you you know, you had gained weight or you had lost weight or you dressed too sexy or you didn't dress sexy enough or um This woman threw herself at me or we weren't spending enough time together or, 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 or that that none of that excuses the behavior. Like the per, a person cheats because they wanted to cheat period. Another person's behavior doesn't drive them to it, especially, especially if the, um, they've never mentioned anything about it before. So if they've never said, Hey, we've got, I've got these issues in our relationship even though I've never mentioned anything before, but I'm going to go ahead and cheat. And then I'm going to feel justified in that because I had these issues. Like that's, that's just, it's ridiculous. Like that's manipulation at its worst is what that is. So in, in the other part to that with, with excuses is excuses can always be believable because oftentimes they, there's a kernel of truth to all of it. It's a kernel of truth wrapped in a big ball of a lie. And it's when you're dealing with a person who lies, you're dealing with a liar. So it'd be a really, it's a really good idea to not trust anything that they have to say, especially anything they have to say about their bad behavior. So I think it's, it's safe to assume that whatever you have found out about is just the tip of the iceberg. But again, like, it, and, and I've been there too. Like, it's amazing the stuff that we can justify to ourselves, like squirrely behavior that we can justify. Somebody deletes their browsing history online and they say, oh, well, I just, I just like to like, you know, keep that stuff cleaned up. No, <laughs> people don't just randomly delete their, I mean, I, you do when like you clear your cache, but not if, you know what I mean? Like most people don't delete their browsing history if they know you're like looking at it or they've done something bad. Uh, People that have nothing to hide, hide nothing. They don't delete email accounts. They don't, um, you know, periodically like they aren't like, they don't hide their phone. They, They don't take their, they don't, they don't have squirrely behavior. Like that's not normal to have squirrely behavior. So but again, like it's amazing the stuff that we can justify to ourselves. And yeah, it's just an exercise. It's an exercise in crazy making. It's an exercise in making yourself nuts is what it is. Trying to convince yourself that you can trust an untrustworthy person is what it boils down to. Lots of love to you guys. You are not alone. You are not crazy. And you really can move forward and heal from this. 